The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. The story goes like this. That a bunch of kids were jumping around the place. And uh, the Belzer of Zechot Tzadik of Racha was waiting for Mayim Shuvim. And the water was splashed all around. The Belzer of asked the boy what his name is. And he said his name was, it is a, not a very typical name, but there is such a B'nai Brak name, Schwarzwolf. That was his last name, Schwarzwolf, Black Wolf. What kind of name is that? And uh, the Belzerov said, you know your name, they're waiting for Shki, or whatever it was, or time for, for Dumayim Shalonu. And he said, you know, you know who Schwarzwolf was? And the kid says, no. He says, let me tell you. He says, there was a man, there was a rub of a certain town in Poland, and uh, Sinish Gigang, and he didn't have children. He did not have children, and, and uh, his wife said, and not only that, but he, okay, he, he kind of accepted it, his wife was not ready to accept it. And she was pushing him, he should go to the Kajan Samagit and ask for a bracha, it's a school to mention the Kajan Samagit, the little shishi. He said, go, and he said, she, he said no, and finally, the, the push over the cliff was that in shul, he, he called, a, uh, called a man over and said, you know, you're not taking care of your kid in shul, you're not being mechanachim properly, and uh, this guy like had the very, very un, uh, shall we say, the opposite of being diplomatic in the worst possible way. And he said to the rub, what do you know? You never raise children, but don't tell me what to do. So that was a very, very hurtful comment. He did not repeat that comment at home, and he decided he's going to the Kajan Samagat for, uh, for Shabbos. And he comes to the Kajan Samagat, and he says, Rebbe, and he tells him over the, the story. And the Kajan Samagat puts his head down for a while, and he says, I can't help you. I can't help you. He's like, Rebbe, you know, you're my last hope. And the Kajan Samagat thinks for a moment, and he says, there's someone perhaps that could help you, his name is Schwarzwolf. Schwarzwolf? Schwarzwolf is a weirdo. He's like a, he's not, he's ain't in a yeshiv, he's a hermit. The lives with his family in the forest. People are scared of him. He's like half beast, half human being. He's like, mm. go to Schwarzwolf. And the Kajan Samagat told him an interesting Musa. He says, you could only see him in the, from the context of how you see yourself. So he figures, how in the world does he get to the Schwarzwolf? You can't even talk to the man. He starts yelling like an like a Egla Rufa in the process of being, having his head chopped off. He says, you can't talk to the guy. So he has an idea. He doesn't even tell his wife what the Rebbe said. He just tells his wife he's going to an uncle for Shabbos. Tells the wagon driver when they get to a certain point in the forest, drop me off. And he goes marching into the forest. And he goes marching into the forest and comes to Schwarzwald's door right before Shabbos. The place looks like a churba shabba churba. It would scare a ghost away. And he bangs on the door and the dust, you know, fills the air or whatever. And she comes out, the wife screaming, yelling. She looks like the wicked witch, the wicked witch of the west, east, and south, north, up and down. Screaming, cursing. And he goes, look, I don't have where to be for Shabbos. And it's five minutes before Shabbos. That was his plan. You have no choice but to take me in. And she's cursing him out. And finally, when the broom you know, goes flying at him, he ducks and it goes flying over her thing. And he wants to give her back her broom because apparently it's her profession if she's stuck of a witch. But <laughs> So he walks out and he says to himself, maybe Shmarzvav is a Lamed Vav Tzadik if this is, yes, you know, if he lives with such a wife. And, and she starts yelling at him. She says, you want to go to the barn? So he gets into the barn. And a few minutes later, the door opens up and there's Shmarzvav, true to his reputation. He screams and curses, and he makes his wife look like Mamish Cinderella. He, he was such a mushkas, you can't imagine, cursing and screaming. And, and so, he says, stay in the barn till Matzah Shabbos and get out of here. So just in case, he did take along a little bit of, you know, a little grape juice and some challah, and he set up the challah on a board and the grape juice and tried to cover it with a little bit of a napkin and make it look somewhat Shabbos digging. As he's about to make kiddush, and suddenly, ah, the donkey, you know, drinks it and Chickens are eating away at his challah, and the cow steps on the gefilte fish, and there goes his suit. And he's stuck. There's no place to go in the middle of the forest at night. And he sits down in the corner and bursts into tears. And then he wipes the tears from his eyes. He goes, look, Rabbi Shalom, this was the last thing I could have done for children. There's nothing more in the world I could have done. So apparently it's not your will. It's not your will I have to accept. And if my people are going to make fun of me, they'll make fun of me. I, and someone will say something insensitive, to say the least. It's my lot in life, and Rabbi Shalom, it's, it's good with you, it's good with me. It took him a long time to get these words out of his mouth. And by then it was Shabbos afternoon. He didn't himself. And the door opened up, and there was like a ray of light. 
and a man appeared very angelic, looking mamish like a malach dressed in white. And he could not believe this was the same Schwarzwolf. They went, and he summoned him into his house, and his house was white, and, and, and everyone was dressed in white, and the Shabbos Lech was still burning, Shalashu this time. And toward the end of Shabbos, Schwarzwolf told him that uh, you're going to have a Ben Zacher and name him Schwarzwolf. And he realized that after, only after he reached a certain level of acceptance in his own heart was he zaycha to see, obviously, this galas of Olamad of Tzadik. Anyway, he comes back and news starts spreading like wildfire that the Rebetzin is expecting and the baby is born. And uh, oh, what happens? That Sunday morning, the Chavar Kaddish is mumbling and they come to the Rav. They should come to the Rav. The Rav says, what happened? So they said, you know that crazy Schwarzwolf, they just, he just died. And the rough burst into tears, and they go, the rough, he's so naive, you know. But uh, a year later, he had a baby, and when he named the baby Schwarzwolf, everybody was quite shocked. And uh, eventually he told them the story, and there was a whole family in Eretz Yisrael that were children from it. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to Inspire.org.